So uh, we're here with the Dingo uh, build, and uh, we've got stage one complete. We've also completed the uh, panhard mount up front. And uh, as you can see, uh, when we're talking about suspension upgrades here in stage two, we've got, uh, I've actually put a couple of uh, just junky old spacers I found in a drawer. We're going to lift, we've lifted the servo. And the reason for that is because uh, when the suspension goes into full compression, we had the two suspension, the two steering rods making contact with each other, so all we had to do was lift up the servo. And uh, I think we've got something like four or five millimeters of just uh, old brass spacers that I found in my spare drawer. And uh, we've got uh, one of the stage two things we're going to do here is the suspension upgrades. Now, the tuning we've done in the front with the steering is all done. We've got the endpoints set up. Uh, we're still using the plastic link up front, and I'm going to show and the plastic link in the rear. I want to show you why that's just a bad idea, and uh, I'm going to prove it to you right now by dragging this thing out here over to the uh, to the carpet in the shop where there's a maximum traction. Now, this uh, truck we've got the 20 turn axial Wraith motor on it with the two speed AX2. So far this truck has run uh, 45.68 amps. Uh, the battery is not full. It's down to uh, under 7.5 volts. And I'm going to pin the gas here on this maximum traction in first gear. And just prove to you why we need to have suspension upgrades in the back. As you can see we've still got the plastic 3 link in there. With the single pivot mount above the axle right here at my thumb. And uh, <laughs> this is all new parts, but even though it's new parts, uh, there's serious problems with this suspension design, and I'm going to show you right now. Watch what happens here when I power on the gas, and uh, something desperate is going to happen right there to that link. Have a look at this. Did you see that? This thing just completely exploded. Now, why is that? Well, because the link is only a single pivot right here all you need is a little bit of power and the link pops right out you can see the top link just sitting here wondering why am I not in the right place now we're gonna upgrade this to a four link truss the GCM truss is a solid piece of billet aluminum that bolts in through these back mount holes right here on the axle casing and that is going to create us with a side screw that goes across when the screw mounting goes across there's no way for it to rip out under power like that and this is the reason why you need to get some solid aluminum upgrades on your back of your differential the front is going to have the same problem eventually because we've still got the plastic link up front and we're going to change that over to a four link as well as part of stage two but uh, this truck drawing 45 amps in first gear has no problem no problem just ripping the suspension right out there under high traction so let's go back to the bench and have a look at that and get this thing up to stage two alright let's get this axle truss put on here this uh, plastic thing has just got to go we're going to start with the uh, GCM uh, aluminum bracket this is a really simple unit that replaces the three link uh, center hole Y on the, on the drive axle right here and uh, we're going to use the same two screws that are right here in the back this is a really easy switch and that gives you a nice solid top link to uh, bolt your four link to in the rear if you have a three link you can use the side hole right here and then uh, chop this thing right off if you want to keep the room up front so you don't have any problem with the suspension travel uh, if that happens to be in the way you can use it for a three link or you can use the side hole right here it's threaded for an M3 screw already and uh, makes a real nice th uh, side link if you have a panhard so uh, for the, in the rear, we're going to use the uh, the two uh, hole, the two links on the sides of the center hole, just set up like this, and uh, we're going to go ahead and unbolt this part here, and then bolt on the new um, truss uh, from GCM, and uh, let's get that done and uh, have a look. All right, so we've got the truss bolted on here now, as you can see and uh, we'll just snug up these two bolts here make sure when you're tightening the two bolts here on the back of the truss that you don't crank them and crank them and crank them because you will in fact go right through the plastic housing so make sure that it's it's on there nice and snug and uh, that you're not squishing the the bolt right through the other side 
And also make sure that your uh, axle is still free inside, and just in case you've crushed the plastic too much and you're binding the bearings or something. And uh, this gives you a really clear idea of what's actually wrong with this. The three link here from the original uh, plastic part goes into this ball joint, and the ball joint fits into this part of the truss right here, and it just pops out all the time. These, these things may they may pivot well this way, but there's not too much uh, resistance there for that to come in or out. So now we've got our four link on the back, and uh, we need to put in some sort of a link up top. So which one is going to work? Well, you wouldn't believe this, but we're going to use a Traxxas link again. We used a Traxxas link for the panhard in the front, and we're going to use a 5138 Traxxas link right here. The 5138 actually comes two in a box, just like this. The, uh, it's a 5138 part number, and uh, it just so happens to be uh, center to center on the screws is 4.6 inches, which is also uh, just under 117 millimeters. So if you're going to make your own links, that's what you need for the rear. This uh, link is just a drop-in. There's nothing really for us to do to set this up except for putting the links inside. And we're going to fit the link right on the original, uh, in the original position. And then reinstall the hardware here. So uh, we've got the Y-link off here. We're going to uh, put our new bolt through the hardware and the uh, the new rod ends through the GCM mount. It's uh, a bit of a two-handed job here for sure. There we go. And now we will just get a nut on the bottom of that. Get this all bolted up here. And then uh, we'll show it off. I'm really excited to get this done. For one, I feel like I can actually put the power down on this truck now without having to worry about the back end popping off all the time. And second of all, it's going to have the smooth transition in the back. There's going to be smooth transition from from uh, one tire rise to the second tire rise when you're going over the rough terrain. We've got no problem with the uh, the torque on the axle pulling or popping out or anything like this. So let's have a look now at this whole truss setup in some detail. So, here we've got the four link truss bolted on. You can also see the side link hole there on the truss. And uh, if you were using this on the front with a three link, you'd probably bolt your one, uh, your one tie rod right into here for the third link and not use the higher center link. So, uh, there you go. That gives you a clear picture down the side show you where we put our new Traxxas 5138 tie rods and uh, everything's lined up perfectly right down the center and we've got our hardware on the back down below we've added the uh, Y-Link replacements here with the 5138 tie rod and just replaced the original hardware and this thing is ready to go full suspension no problem Lots and lots of articulation. It's nice and clean. This is great. Now in the front end, we're going to do the exactly the same thing. So I'm not going to show you all that all over again because it's the same process to take the link from the back off and replace it. So in the front, we're just going to take the link off the front as well and uh, replace the front link. And that will close us up for stage two on the suspension overhaul on our Dingo upgrade kit. So there you have it from GCM. That's the installation procedure for the truss in the back. And uh, we'll go ahead and add one to the front for our pan hard 3 link up front. And uh, we're finished stage 2.